This episode is brought to you by Ritual. Hear ye, hear ye. Gather round and hear my tale of woe. It was a sunny morning in Los Angeles and I was excited because I had a romantic rendezvous with a special someone that evening. The problem? When trying on my new leopard print dinner jacket, I looked down and saw a stomach the size of Texas. I was so severely bloated, I almost canceled my date. But do you know what saved me? Ritual Symbiotic Plus. That's right, Jessica. Ritual saved this bloated buffoon from another night at home eating cucumber sandwiches and listening to The Cure. Listen, sometimes in life, your gut needs a little probiotic support. That's where Ritual comes in. They made a three-in-one supplement with clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. Ritual's delayed release capsule is designed to help survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract. Plus, it's an all-in-one minty capsule. No refrigeration needed, so you can be bloat-free and smell minty fresh. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at Ritual.com com slash bald start ritual or add symbiotic plus to your subscription today that's ritual.com slash bald for 25 percent off welcome to the pod ladies and gentlemen i know i've been kind of negative excuse you but um hiv hiv negative i did uh, have a recent fun success please i got to do a photo shoot with mike ruiz the photographer oh mama that mother toilet was so backed up. <laughs> that mother toilet was stuck. Someone tried to flush a jelly sandal on that mother toilet and it started shooting water. Pearls, all their jewelry fell into the mother toilet as they were blowing ass. I've been so sick and I could bar- I can barely walk in heels right now. But I was like, I need the... I- I think that the threat of death was on my mind. I said, I need these pictures to serve. Mom, it was Cuntalina Servington giving shitty mother toilet. And call I- the plumber, call I- the police. I know everyone hates me, but... I will never show up to a, a photo shoot and not model my little pussy off. Well, I will never no not kidding. show up to a photo shoot and give you the arm, the leg, the body, the face, the you angle. You give the, the, the Asian woman who does the 14,000 poses. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah. Well, that's I mean, how fast it was because they had photo shoots before me booked and photo shoots after me booked. So I had to do four looks in a hurry. Mama, and you know how those photo shoots, these Hollywood photo shoots, but it's like cocaine, champagne, like every- No, it was like, and I'm done. It was like moving quickly. And of course the people before and after me were straight. So it's 47 racks of clothing, full teens. And full helplessness, blind, complete, blind, I said, what are these racks of clothing for? Are you guys guys, um, outfitting a musical at the Glendale Community Theater? Like it was racks (laughs) of clothes. Hello Dolly for six years. And they're like, oh, this one moderately famous male actor. I'm like, that's right. Moderate to low level straight fame is all hands on deck. Call 911. We need to get this person in. We yeah. need to fill in their brows for a photo shoot. We should call 12 people. Call 12 people because we need to um, airlift them out of their bed with uh, 18 hands. And then they they can't do anything. They don't do anything. They don't themselves. do anything. Well, Mike Ruiz was so nice and so beautiful. Are he is so ridiculously in shape. Did you fuck His arm him? had. Did you suck his cock? You suck his cock. His arm looked like. It was like birch bark, a brown, like, cause he's like a tan kind of tan skin tone, mm-hmm. like a tan rubber balloon wrapped over phone cords. Cause just bodybuilding. Oh, vascularity. Ripped. The Re- vascularity. vascularity. Yes. Love. I could trace. I could, if I was a Br- Br- Helen Keller. Yes. Gur- you could read his veins. The T I'd be like, <laughs> Mike, you know, I would know who he was. <laughs> Mike. Wow. You just gorged on sugary sweets and you haven't drank water in three days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but he really was so gorgeous, and the pictures were taken very quickly, and I was very pleased how they turned out. Mama, they looked. They oh it was cunt. It was it was um photo uh, book mag. Uh, 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 Cuntington Park. No, nope. after dark. Trying to make a pun. Trying to make a pun. It was Irving Plaza by way of Build a Bear. Is what was going on down there. Why we what? I don't know what I said. <laughs> That's like, you can have chili or you can have can chili have, with the noodles. You know, I don't need a fact checker. I need a friend and a comedy partner. Okay. I don't need, I don't need an adver- another adversary in this, in this, this doggy dog world. Thank you. <laughs> you have been recently doing some photo shoots for some upcoming video, sh- video shoots for upcoming content. Oh mama. We're talking Which about is, can serving I just say, mother toilet shit. Just call me the plumber. Very unlike you to out of your own volition, go do some drag filming for no money by yourself. Mama, this is art. I started to be like, Mama, this is art. Mama, have you met my art? But I know what it takes to get you in drag on set where you only have to do 50% of the work. It's the power of art. So when I found out you were out shooting on your own, I said, 
It's the power of art. Does she owe Satan or something? Like, her, like <laughs> does she have like a deal with the devil? No, YouTube's a, the, the, my mortgage needs to be paid and YouTube is a, you know, I, we got to get YouTube down here to film this shit. We got to get YouTube. <laughs> I love YouTube. You should do more. I was just talking to David Silver the other day about reflections and, yeah, that's and where we, that's total what recall. This is, yeah, that's what this you is. You were so good on YouTube. I, I'm, well, it's com I'm coming back, baby, with a vengeance. We got Bitch Fork, the Russian music criticism um, uh, talking head thing where I just... I feel bad though because I might have to cut one or two of the episodes because the the whole you know how you know how Pitchfork always winds back their like they you know their their ratings they they did it notoriously with Lana Del Rey they like it's like when Glenn it's like when you win a retroactive Oscar for a film that you should have won but you did you know what I mean like I don't know what you're talking about do they really the, do this yeah they do they re rate they, they have been notorious for this so like um, say for example I, I, I could be wrong but and it doesn't matter if I am it's just my point of view it matters but, to me <laughs> it matters a lot to me and I will be commenting if she's wrong <laughs> and I will be blocking and reporting your website <laughs> everybody because a lot of people watch this live when it comes out they're watching now. You need to fact check this thing, you. <laughs> oh, let us know if it's wrong. Oh, sound off in the comments if she's a, being a big fucking flop liar cunt. But I love your solo YouTube content. Well, so we did. So Bitch Fork was like the 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 thesis was albums that I previously loved, but then have grown to hate because. So for example, like when I so if, you know with Russian language or any foreign language stuff, I'm obviously listening to the beat, the melody. I, I love the the sounds of the words. I'm not necessarily super invested in the meaning because when I go to the trouble of translating them, they're often mama garbage, Tina, like there Labada has a song about Instagram. Okay. Insta drama. It's called, it's called Insta drama. It's so stupid. It's so it sounds bad. like a Disney kid song. It's like, um, it, but the, the, there's a, a remix by this Ukrainian, um, artist called Maruv in the, it is so cunty, but if you don't, only if you don't understand Russian, because it's so stupid, but it's such a cunty fucking tune. So anyways, I, I went, um, I did her album called sold out. And by the way, she mopped Billie Eilish's bad guy. She completely mopped the melody, sped it up and is, it made, it made headlines in the Russian press. And so like, there's just things like that, you know, little fun facts and, and features. Um, so I kind of go ham on some albums and also just share ones that I love and, and whatever. It might not P be great. Well, Pitchfork is pretty, um, let's say, unflinching. So I think you should feel if you're doing Pitchfork that you can be unflinching. Yeah, but they have been, they have been, um, they have walked back their reviews. They have like- Kind of um, renegotiated re their- Yeah. Like, um, you know, it's, I think I think they did it with Lana. Well, I read that article you sent me about Lana. Did you fucking- Finally read it. Did you I loved it. It was it a was great so read. so fabulous. I'm paraphrasing, but something that I really got out of it was that many of Lana's early stages were self-indulgent or character-driven or sort of a, a critique on an idea mm -hmm. of Hollywood. Yeah. And they were kind of insisting that now is the time to really listen because they're like, now she's not pretending. This is just like really good artistry. Yeah. I mean, I love all of her music. Me too. I mean, and I, I prefer the fem, the, 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 the manufactured. The, it's femme so fatale. draggy. Yeah. It's a she's character. Playing a character. Yeah. She's playing a character and she's, she's doing it, you know, and it's like, I've, I've never, I've never felt the need or the desire to critique the point of view of that character. Right. For being anti-feminist, for being, um, you know, uh, for being complicated, for being not politically correct. Never. It's a character. They don't, and I don't think we ever, I think you're foolish to ever think that that character has willfully picked up the reins to, to speak on these things. No, she she's no critiquing things like fame yeah. and like money or whatever. Yeah. Gender but, roles, gender, um, and sexism. She's critiquing the, you know, whatever she's, or she's, it doesn't even be, need to be a critique. She's just expressing some, an idea. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's fears and powers is cunty. Something that I've always thought that Lana's music captured really well was if you've been in love really young, it feels like the world would, was made for you and someone else Absolutely. and the world would end Absolutely. if it, you weren't together. Absolutely. And her music captures that, the like throw yourself on a, off a bridge Overwrought level. Overwrought tragic romance. And sort of like self-indulgent. Yeah. It's not really about the truth. It's about, I feel like if we aren't in love, the, 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 the world doesn't matter. Yeah. That is what it feels like though of when you're like 16 in love. You're like, you're almost puke. You're so excited. And that person glows. Yeah, you really. Know? They really do. And with, with Lana, what if I've always felt like if you love her music, you're going to love her music because she uses the same, it's, it's a lot, it is a lot of formulaic stuff, especially in the early days and the same 12 words, crazy, ride, baby, American, uh, drive, fast, um, daddy, daddy, um, 
uh, and that's about it. She's got about 12 words in her vocab, and it's kind of... Shaka Khan. <laughs> RuPaul, 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 Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. I love that fucking that clip. Is with her nineties pin straight and then honey. the the, the, the I liked her Vanessa Williams wigs with those thin little cunty Looking glasses. Like blue Cantrell. Like blue Cantrell. Ladies hit him up style. Shaka Khan style. It's so It's like a long pause and then she goes, Shaka, Shaka Khan. Khan. It's so fierce. <laughs> She's so confident. It is does it it's, like for a while it was hard for anybody to ask me anything and not me say Shaka Khan back. <laughs> At, on the Dune premiere of Red Carpet, I know you're gonna do that. Oh, yeah. What was it like working with Florence Pugh? Shaka, Shaka Khan. Khan. <laughs> oh, entirely. Uh, Lana Del Rey, did you know there's a Helen Ocean Boulevard? Shaka, Shaka Khan. Khan. <laughs> like, right in the face. Fucker right in the pussy. Love the fucker right in the pussy guy. Give I've him an Ambi. Purple Heart. Give Oscar. him the Ambi. We're giving, we're, he should be at the Dune premiere. Mama. If we ever have a movie in. premiere, we need to have him. I think we just need to do it. My, my, uh, I'll just do it. I volunteer. Or, or you, you bring a or date. We bring him. Oh, yeah. You bring him as your date. You bring him up to, to the, the podium. Best. You bring him up to the podium. You plan for him to interrupt and say, fuck, brother. if I ever am accepting a major award, let's say I won an Emmy. You cry. And then you say- In the middle, he runs up and po- checks me. I'll I hit right the ground. The I snap my femur, leg through the tights. <laughs> Shangela. And he, has, and he has the hood up and he goes, fuck her right in the pussy. And they play music and play me off. Jennifer Coolidge steps over my body. <laughs> Annie Hathaway chomps on, your dead, on, on the leg, the broken leg. What do you hate more? Really rehearsed and over like overdone speeches, or do you hate when they're just like, "I'm a little drunk. This is crazy." Bye. Uh, it's funny you say that because I just watched several TikTok compilations of award speech acceptance, award acceptance speeches, and there's a cunty, cl- you know, the classic one of Sally Field, and way back in the day in the '80s, she's like, "You like me? You really like me?" And it cuts to John Malkovich going like, <laughs> <laughs> "It's like, it's." It's so cunty. He's like, oh, not me. <laughs> it's like it was not so. Really, it was so cringy because she was like, that. I love her. I mean, she's such a fucking legend. Soap dish is like my I love, everything. I but, love Fiona Applegate. Um, uh, sorry, Fiona, Fiona Applegate. Apple. Fiona Apple. <laughs> well, the gate, the Fiona Applegate of it all. Yeah. When she was like, I love this word's great. Um, think for yourselves because this world is bullshit. Love. By the way, she was right. Well, she was right. Yeah, I mean, of course she's right. But there's a time. This is there's a time and a place. I don't know. I think it's cunty to, no, 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 to no, win no, your no. award and say I kind of reject the idea that anybody's music is. <gasps> oh, oh no no no! That's but that yeah. When you're critiquing the the structure, the power structure, or the voting body, or the 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 whatever, absolutely. But when you're using it to like proselytize about um like politics, I was like, Mama, you are not Christian Amanpour. You are not um, Diane Sawyer, it, and you're certainly not um, a Rachel Maddow. So it's so much stop worse it. when they thank God. Um, no, I, I can I don't because that's short. What is the three letters? God. It's not like Manischewitz, it's Guberman, the second. You know no, what I mean? But they they always do the rosary. <laughs> always. Hail <laughs> Mary, Mother of God. I'm always like, oh my God. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. What would you? Do? What <laughs> they, would I do? What would you do if I, I I accept a word, God willing? Then I go up and I say. One day, Guru Nam Charanaravinde, Sandarshita Swatma, Sukhaba Bode, Nishreya Se, Jangalika Yamane, Samsara Hala Hala, Moha Shandye, Abahu Purushakaram, Shankachakrasti, Dharidam, Sahasra, Shirasam, Shvetam, Pranamamim, Patanjalim. Om, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. No, you know, no, we're not taking a break. You know, when X Men, when the traumatic experience gives them powers, yeah, I think that's the moment where I would bend metal or something. Yeah. It would be so breaking to my psyche <laughs> that everyone around me would start throwing up blood or something. Like I don't You'd know. You'd be what Jean Grey, the Phoenix. Yes, you would be. No, I. So and then the uh, Merritt Weaver, like I gotta go. Bye. So cute, lovely, short and snappy. Yeah. Um, if, if, when you don't have something prepared. And you ramble as if it is such a shock that you won. You are, you are blindsided. It's like, didn't you pay for that hundred fifty thousand dollar Grammy campaign? Didn't, didn't you pay for didn't it? Didn't you see the little uh, the feature in Variety in a Hollywood Reporter where you are indeed nominated? And didn't you uh, get a dress handmade by Zach Posen and pose on the red carpet for your nomination? There's a chance you're going to win. Prepare something. Show respect your art form and respect your colleagues completely. Like it's so, I find that so cringe more than like the um the the. Uh, uh, you it's know, one the, thing to be humble. It's another thing to be like indignantly sort of like unprepared. 
Yes. You know? yeah, like it's it's false modesty in a way. It's like I'm I should, I should never thought there was a happy me. I have nothing to say. I, like I mean it's you shouldn't go up there and be like, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> no, you should I think slapping Chris Rock or whatever. Wait, all these real awards. I grabbed this. <laughs> all these actual I mean, awards. You know what? Of all these accolades, this is the one I'm most proud of. Sure. My planty. Yeah. I got the planty in a, for my um for you my to, riveting work as a as a tree in the background of um, a bow is afraid. Of course, it was cut on the cutting room floor, but you know they should have these for like um, the plant gays who post naked pictures. Um, we got to do away with the um, we got to do away with uh, tongue out peace sign gays. Oh, but what, what what about those? Love her? No, I love yeah, her. She's con- yeah, I can't. Um, we got to do away with that. Oh, we we also got to do away with white walls, gold furnishings with plants. Got to do away it, with that. I can't do. I'm not doing it right. It's like the. It's like, well, I shit myself. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, I have four. Lo- I was gonna fart. But Forty loads of my ass. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that was blood. <laughs> blood came out of my dick. Well, here we are. It was a blart. <laughs> a blood fart. A blart. All blart. Mall carp. This episode is brought to you by Ritual. Hear ye, hear ye. Gather round and hear my tale of woe. It was a sunny morning in Los Angeles and I was excited because I had a romantic rendezvous with a special someone that evening. The problem? When trying on my new leopard print dinner jacket, I looked down and saw a stomach the size of Texas. I was so severely bloated, I almost canceled my date. But do you know what saved me? Ritual Symbiotic Plus. That's right, Jessica. Ritual saved this bloated buffoon from another night at home eating cucumber sandwiches and listening to The Cure. Listen, sometimes in life your gut needs a little probiotic support. That's where Ritual comes in. They made a three-in-one supplement with clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. I was recently watering my rose bushes, and I struck up a conversation with my neighbor, Big Steve. We got to chatting. And did you know daily disturbances like poor diet, stress, travel, the use of certain medications, and plenty of other factors can throw off your gut microbiome? I know. When he mentioned this, I told him all about Ritual. They created Symbiotic Plus to support the relief of my own occasional bloating, gas, and diarrhea. I take Ritual Symbiotic Plus every day with my morning bowl of oat meal and my bloating has virtually disappeared just like my self-confidence after falling out of my lemon tree and fracturing my coccyx. Well, it doesn't help a broken ego or fractured coccyx. Postbiotics do provide fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining to support a healthy gut barrier. Ritual's delayed release capsule is designed to help survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract. Plus, it's an all-in-one minty capsule. No refrigeration needed, so you can be bloat-free and smell minty fresh. There's no more shame in your gut game. Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide your insides. Get 25% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash bald. Start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash bald for 25% off. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. In the midst of my hectic schedule as lead precious minerals prospector in the Yukon wilderness, I can get very stressed. One severely cold day this winter, I found myself alone, sitting near an icy brook as I tried to catch a wild salmon for dinner. I stared off into the distance, wishing that I had more time. And I asked myself, time for what? If time was unlimited, what would I use it for? Catch more salmon? Seek out human companionship? After minutes upon minutes of contemplation, I came to the realization that the best way to squeeze something into your schedule is to know what's important to you, and then make it a priority. Therapy can help you find out what matters most to you, so you can do more of it. It's as simple as that. BetterHelp is literally designed to work with your crazy schedule. I love therapy, even when I have to do it via satellite phone at 3 a.m. from a glacier. My therapist really helped me through a recent incident where a bear almost ate me. She was my rock. Not the rock that I used to fend off the bear, but rather an emotional rock. You can use therapy to help prioritize your life, too. With BetterHelp, you can be matched with the best licensed therapist for you. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and perfectly suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash ball today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. I got to tell you something that happened to me. Mm-hmm. I was wait, on a plane. Wait, 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 wait. What okay, is it? Sorry, go ahead. I was on a plane, okay. and it was a real life bona fide heterosexual flight attendant. Uh, that's like a yeti. 
That's like Miss Bigfoot. I do not believe it. And I've I've told a couple people about it because you know I I think when a problem solve a problem cut in half a problem shared is a problem, problem cut, cut in half. half. Yep. And I couldn't stop watching him because he was straight. I know. I know what a straight person looks like. All right. Yeah. I've been I've, I've been bushwhacked, dingleberry to ass. Yeah. I've sucked enough cock in like dorm room style rooms for adult men to know what a straight guy <laughs> looks like. All right. And he was straight. Yeah. Where he's like, hey, bro, you want some fucking yeah, Coke like a gold Zero chain bitch? And like a little mock <laughs> turtleneck. And I was like, to be a straight guy and be a flight attendant is so almost it's like it's, it's like faggy. No, I was just <laughs> like, are you breaking down barriers? It's iconoclastic. For your people? Iconoclastic. And for my people? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Like, not every gay is a flight attendant, and not every straight guy is not a flight attendant. Look well, at this. And also, not every... So I, I recently had sex with a flight attendant who was very gay. Very gay. Very gay. And um, uh, I asked him, I was like, you know, I've never... Gay I, boys? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, girl, eight fucking... Nine, no, nine inch weenie. Nine inch weenie. And I, you know, I'm very skeptical. I'm very skeptical because when people say nine inches, I'm like nine inches or what? You know what I mean? So, but I was a little appropriately cautious and a little bit afraid, naked and afraid in my, in my boudoir with just a, a like a, a light sheen of, um, shoot and more mist on my shoulders with my come hither negligee. Kerosene? Uh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> my shoot and more misting spray and my, my champagne teddy with the spaghetti strap dangling over one very provocative shoulder. Uh-huh. Looking back. And of course, my whole backside was covered in shitty streaks. Right. Um, but I, I, I could not believe how inexperienced I am with taking things up my ass. I could not believe it. I, well, I can't believe it because I just don't do it very often. But you know, I got people people taking shoulders. You know, they're taking they're taking um, John Deere tractors up there with nary a flinch, and they love it. It, of course they love it. I mean, they, they can't, they're dying for it. But meanwhile, this took, I mean, we were, go, it was so fabulous. And we were doing it all, you know, like all night. It was like, you came over, the, spent the whole day Saturday. Oh, lovely man. So funny. So fabulous. And I asked him, I was like, I've never seen a woman pilot. My friend David says he's flown many planes with women pilots. And he's like, oh yeah, we got a lot, tons of women pilots. I was like, really? I don't think on Delta I've had a single female pilot. Have you? Well, I always see women. <laughs> so it sounds like you don't. Well, I see them when I'm fucking their titties. Um, well, you can always tell if it's a female pilot because it's, she's you know, crying. It's all over the road. She's crying and bleeding. Yeah, she's crying. <laughs> yeah. She's she's menstruating. She's all over the road. Yeah, she's, she's super, giving birth. She's super emotional. She gets yeah. lost. Yeah, all the, time. the plane is going down because she's on maternity leave. You know, like where's the pilot? Oh, she's at home breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah she had a, a craving for pickles. We have to stop at Gelson's. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, uh, I do. Kn every time I see a female pilot, I. I hope this is okay. I always go, oh, work. Like I always go, a oh, female pilot. Well, yeah. But is it more progressive for me to not notice and be like, that's normal? But I notice that it's not typical. I've, the same way I notice it's not typical to have a straight flight attendant. I, yes. I mean, like I, I've just, honestly, I cannot ever recall having ever been on a plane with a female pilot. Why do, you know, we make fun of flights a lot. Flight attendants do not have an easy job. Oh, mama. The way no. people treat flight attendants is oh, fucking psycho. I got the whole lowdown. I got the whole fucking lowdown, bitch. Uh, one, on a, one, a flight that he was on, somebody got a, a flight attendant bashed somebody with a coffee um, pot because they were being so out of pocket. Of course, they got fired. But, you know. The flight attendant bashed the person? Mm -hmm. Oh, that that's bonk, fine. Bonk, bonk, bonk. I thought the up. person hit them. Oh, no, no, no. The person I was acting. I think the flight attendant out. should be allowed to like. Whoosh, whoosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Grab them by the scruff of the neck and then throw them down the aisle. It's like cattle prod. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, it's, you know, uh, line their uh, uh, oxygen mask with iodine or um, cyanide, anything. Yeah. Or like uh, DIY cattle prod, like a selfie stick hooked up to a car battery. Just that. I love that. Or like, oops, was your coffee too hot? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, Sorry, pig. Oh, did, was there a little pissed flavor in that coffee? It was a little piss flavor, wasn't there? Although, because oh, I pissed in it. The flight attendants, because I always drink hot black tea on planes, and the flight attendants have told me don't drink hot beverages on planes. The hot teapot doesn't get cleaned enough. That's what they've said. But oh, I interesting. Do it anyway, Whatever. but then I am you, like you're, near. You're wilding now. out with Nikanen, though. You're wilding out. Well, don't you think like? Well, I told him my story about spritzing myself with perfume in the in the bathroom, and he was like, "I would have kicked you off the plane. I would have. I would have. I would have." The fucking, Boeing Max yeah, door I would, open, I would have like shirt torn off the cross kid. Cross check and all call, pedo plane, activate. Yeah, my clothes would have been ripped off. Everybody would have seen my my gray, gross, naked body. I would have been humiliated and then plummeted to a violent death. He would have fucked you in front of everyone. 
Do you like the porn of really ugly men fucking hot guys? No. Because that's like a whole... Th- <laughs> Let's take a break. Cause, no, because that's like a whole thing. Well, that's you've, like so whole- you've seen my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone fucks that. Yeah. That's like a whole thing is like straight hot guy having to bottom for like ugly old fat guy who makes them say things who oh. makes them say things like what are you doing and the guy's like oh, i'm getting fucked he's and the guy's like fucked by what he's like it's a dick up my ass and he's like and do you like it he's like i like Mama. it like it's someone old ugly jake fat cruz. making them jake cruz have you known have you heard about jake cruz i'll say it again jake crew jake cruz he did he had a porn um like like a sean a sean cody type of porno website say it again jake crew Jake Cruz. Jake Cruz. It Spell was, it. It was Jake Cruz. And who would play her? J- uh, Jake. Uh, J- Jake Cruz. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> RuPaul. I think the pod's coming back. Did you see her announcement? You're kidding. Honey. What's the honey? Tea? You want to talk Nine Inch Boner? You want to talk Nine Inch Boner? Turgid. RuPaul Still said, Denifil, like, to uh, she's like, subscribe now. It's it's a surprise coming to you this year. If what's the tea comes back, goon. I will be goon from part three. Like it will be like. Blood, you know what it'll be? Bloodshot Diva. Hellraiser. Hooks shooting out from the corners of the room into my skin like, yeah. uh, Oh, totally. Uh, yeah. Uh, cans on every orifice. Just, I'm oh. ready. I love it. You this ha- the house of secret meanings. <laughs> the house of, house of hidden meanings. The house that Jack built. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. So, um, the, he was telling me also that, um, a, a friend of his, uh, another flight attendant at another airline, they were, um, sometimes they find themselves on like an empty flight. For whatever reason, the pilots, you know, the two or three flight attendants go to somewhere and they fucked, um, fucking on the empty player line, Mile High Club, baby. Cunty. Even another flight attendant. Yeah. And that the, I believe. Yeah. But then the pilots didn't know. Isn't that cunty? Yeah. Love it. Very. Love it. But I, I fucked a flight attendant once. In the, he in was the really nice. In the airplane? No. Oh, okay. Because a lot of times flight attendants stay at the same hotel rooms as us. Oh, sure. I used to tell, I think I told this story on my first stand-up specials. I was staying in room like 404 and he was in 406. It was one of those rooms with adjoining doors. And Love. I was like, it's fate. Love. It was like. Did you shining it? Did you take an ax and go, no, it here's was like, What Trixie. room are you in? I was like, you're <laughs> kidding. Open the door and he was there. And I was like, well, I guess we're doing this. I mean. <laughs> We're basically fucking already. We're five feet from each other. Hello. I wish you were been like uh, Shelly Duvall with a knife, though. Like, ah. uh, he had adult braces, which I was fine with. Love, I love adult braces. I'm telling you, you gotta get braces. I think I'm gonna get him again. I'm gonna get him again. I love not like not permanent ones, but like an a, um like a retainer that has the look of braces. Cause that mama, that queen of flips, bitch, she got me right together. Honey, it's all about the queen of flips. All I know you. I know you think you do acrobatics. No, 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 no. I did my intro to level one gymnastics stuff. That let's not get it twisted. Miss Queen of Flips is is Simone Biling up there. Queen of Flips is the grudge. She's down the stairs, back. No, she, no like, she's the the she's Reagan from The Exorcist. She's spider amazing. walking. It's cunty, and she's a size fourteen. She's a bigger girl, and she also has a. I think I, Maya Evelyn LePage is who we're talking about. Lower center of gravity. I believe she's pretty short. On drag, she appears to be well, short. There you go. That's yeah. That's, that probably helps. That helps but I just a lot. watched her do a handstand and walk on her hands in drag. I know. I saw it. That's what I'm talking about. It's what? fucking cunty. It's cunty. Licious in diva. drag. In drag. How hard is that to do out of drag? I know. I could bear. Uh, oh, not out of drag is not. It's not that. Fun. It's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you can do a handstand like with some kind of st- some stability, you can. It's do just it. sort of like Ugh. I could do it. But Ugh. I mean, she but was. in drag, girl, with Move, wigs, with a wig and, on, in, in heels too. Like it's real. With the kids in the car. I know. D- dead. Could you believe it? Right dead kids, kids in the car. Remember the kids? Yeah, goldfish. De- Good morning. Your kids are dead. Wake up. Your kids are dead. Mom, dad, sister, brother. Wow. Dead. dead. Wow. <laughs> Maya, I'm on the page. Okay. The problem okay. with that is okay. you should talk to her. You should be like, you're setting you're setting yourself up for 10 years. She's going to be getting Kennedy a hip replacement. Kennedy Davenport, Mary. She's Kennedy Davenport. Well, does, does Kennedy have any injuries? Um, I'm. She, well, have you ever noticed the way that she walks? <laughs> she makes She makes you look like Naomi Campbell. But I think she walks like she's over it. I think it's more mental. Yeah. Kennedy walks like she's over it. This food nasty. Yeah, totally. Yeah. This food nasty. Well, yeah, I, I don't know what her, I don't know what the status of her musculature is, but yeah, I, it was, you know, and it's such a fucking tragedy because yeah, you do that one show stopping number and then you, it's just like, you can't not like, I always, I find myself in situations where like, okay, my, my the hip is hurting. I, I'm not going to do anything. And of course you feel yourself in the moment and then you just fucking you rock it and you, you regret well, the it. The adrenaline kicks in. I just had to do celebrating discos all weekend and my knees were killing me but once i'm in several layers of compression tights which yeah. does help with swelling hell yeah what about and i had wraps on my anti braces i had wraps on under the tights oh, ace bandage. and Knee then pads. i had braces on over the tights but then when i got there my dress had a slit and i was like 
I gotta take this off. It looks so stupid. But then oh, once no. once you start to feel better, you're pushing it, and then the next day you're like, don't get fierce, Miss Dina. And you're not wearing heels, are you? I wear heels out there, and then I switch into Crocs. Think, okay. Because that's crazy. Any amount of heel right now is go un- any amount of heel anywhere. Like I don't know how I truly am baffled about um, people who walk out of the house for an evening out or like the day at work or whatever with five, four or five inch um, stiletto heels on with nary a change of shoes in their in their satchel. Luckily, I mean, this weekend we had Solid Pink Disco in Portland Friday, and we had a double Solid Pink Disco in San Francisco on Sunday. Two of them at the Independent. Great turnout. Great venue. You live. Every, you live. Lines around the block sold out every show. Love. Everyone is in pink. Love. Head to toe. Love. Glitter. Blush. Lips. Faggotry. Wigs. Malicious gay faggotry. Everyone is in wigs. Everyone is in... But everyone usually goes for like a pink sneaker, pink converse, a croc. Because if you're going to dance... You're gonna hate yourself after ten minutes if you're in a pump. That's when I see these. I, when I see these faggots, especially the ones who are like hot during Halloween and they want to go out and dress in like platform heels. I'm like, honey, ain't nobody looking at your feet, and you will live to regret it. And unless you're you have the poise all night that they, they don't hurt, you're gonna look stupid. Nobody has the poise. I mean, even Violet suffers at the end of the night. You know what I mean? And she loves pain. How about this? My she pro- loves the it. promoter. The first fucking flop, Bruno, I'm looking at you. Um, the He brought me to Brazil for like $100 a gig, 11 cities in two weeks. Love bloop, it. Bloop. And then- um, <clears throat> he, bought a sm- he bought a small farm making money off you. Do you know what the first thing he said to me? He's like, wow, I can't believe I got you so cheap. I was like, <sighs> love that. Love to hear it. Love that. Maybe got three to four hours of sleep max every night. It was so hard. It was so fucking hard. Anyways, this motherfucker shows up to one of the gigs- in platform heels. I was like, you're the promoter, sweetie. You need to hustle. He was so drunk, shoes off, blister bloody feet, four in the morning, coked out. And I'm like, you know what? This ain't gonna work, mama. This ain't gonna work on day two, day three. It was so unbelievable. Well, you know about this. Sometimes people would book us and it became very transparent. You booked me to hang out. You booked me to feel like you're with one of the girls. Yes, that is. And I cl- I close the spiritual door yeah. to the realm very qu- quickly. I go, no, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to eat. I just want to go to my hotel room and you show up at 8. F- call time's at 9. You can meet me at my door at 8.55. Hell yeah. Boundaries. Absolutely. You still I mean, have boundaries. No. You didn't book me for the girlfriend experience. Thank you. I'll show up and do my number, but then I'm leaving. Yeah. And if you want the girlfriend experience, you're going to have to pay an extra 15, you know, 1500. Nobody wants it. <laughs> Nobody wants it. Me and drag, that's the stepdad experience. The, the, the gross dad experience. <laughs> Hi, it's Katya, and today's episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. Well, it may look like a beer or some crazy energy drink, but it's not. Liquid Death is actually a healthy beverage brand that makes mountain spring water, low sugar sodas, and low sugar iced teas too. Hi, it's Katya again. Perhaps you've noticed a coworker cracking a tall boy at your 9 a.m. meeting. I know I have. You could have spotted a group of kids drinking them at a soccer practice. Or maybe you caught your own designated driver downing one while driving. Okay, but why would a healthy beverage ever be called liquid death? Because liquid death will brutally murder your thirst and their infinitely recyclable cans are helping to bring death to single-use plastic bottles. Ah, ah, ah. Liquid Death also donates a portion of profits to every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. Hi, it's Katya again. I'm just cracking open a can of severed lime. I like it because I like lime and I like sparkling water. When the two come together, oh baby, am I in heaven. It's Trixie now. Um, I love Liquid Death because they're always available backstage. And I remember I used to see roadies and like tech people bringing them. And I'd be like, is this guy drinking like beer on the job or like the most rotted energy drink? And then they started putting my dressing room. I was like, who's putting beer? Like it gave me a, I guess even after 15 years of drag, I shouldn't judge cans by their cover because I was like, oh, this is water. Oh, this is fun water. And you know, plastic, I'm going to tell you from being a doll collector, plastics, there's oil in plastic. Plastic is not as infinitely recyclable as aluminium, as they call it in Australia, so in the UK. So it's great. 
You can get free shipping of Liquid Death's Mountain Water, flavored sparkling and iced tea, eight packs with Amazon Prime, or grab a can or a case at your local 7-Eleven, Walmart, Target, Whole Foods, or Instacart. Go to liquiddeath.com slash ball to check out all their healthy, infinitely recyclable beverages and find your closest retailer. That's liquiddeath.com slash bald. Liquiddeath.com slash bald. Ah. Ah, again, this was Katya. Bob came to visit me in San Francisco. Bob, I, Bob the drag queen. No, Lauren Bobert, Bobert. No, it was Bob the drag queen. <laughs> Bob Mackey. And she's out with Madonna. It was so crazy because I, I can't conceive of touring on that level, I right? Can't Stadiums. And I said, how many shows a week do you do? She was like, well, you know, she said those big venues, it's like weekends mostly. So she's like, we'll do two show on, two show, two show days, five days off. Uh, a day on, four days off, then a day. I'm erect. Why I know, I know. And I was like, wow, fierce. And there's a lot of downtime. And then Bob was showing me his process in the show. Bob is either on stage performing or costume changing all night. Bob yeah. has multiple makeup changes. He gets in and out of drag. Oh, I know. Cause he starts as like a ballroom kind of He starts of thing. in like the drag makeup and then does just a boy look. And then he's dressed as a this. And then he's either quick changing or on stage the whole time. That's stressful. Thank, Crazy. Thank God she starts two hours late every night. Bloop. I didn't ask about that. I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I, I, because I, if you know Madonna, like I've, I, I've, I've known about that for years, ever since Boston. Like she just, uh, she's always that's always her tea, and it's like you got to plan for that. You don't want to go see her show if you don't prepare to stay out until one a.m. That's not our tea. We may start early. You might miss us, honey. Curtain at eight. We might start be singing and dancing by seven forty-five. I'm West from Promo, um, from Pomona, like uh, 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 with a grudge, and I'm gonna start your music before you're in uh, in the in the club. You told me about. You that. know what they used to do at Jacques Cabaret. Um, they would, uh, Chris Torelli, the, oh my God, it's so funny. They would start it at 8.15, no matter if any of the showgirls were there. Love. Honestly, I have no issue with that no. because if it's a 10, 8, 10 PM showtime you, you have to and get it's it 10, out. 20 and you're not here. Mm -hmm. Don't come. Yeah. Literally don't come. Yeah. I always, and I tell all the baby drag queens this, bring an extra number, extra look, extra song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if the lineup starts, you're like, I have an extra number. Mm -hmm. You can make their $40. Hell yeah. Cause fuck late drag queens, fuck Mama, late drag you queens. Would, you would never believe. I know Fina and I have talked about this with you. Misery with a Z, the best drag name ever. She would show up. So, okay. The overture goes on at 10, 15, 10, 20 is the, the opening MC's bit. It's anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. First number usually starts around 10, 35. She goes on, she's up first in the lineup. She would waltz in unpainted at 10, 10. Live. Sometimes 10, 20. Live. And when she's like, don't worry, I'll be ready. And her version of readiness, all due respect, love you, Miz, is, um, I don't Would she get ready? Well, when you say ready, what I would describe as show, as camera ready and show girl ready, is not exactly this type. She, would be, she would be ready by the end of her number, by the end of the show, third number, she might have a little, she would have fully painted. She would go like a brow, she would do a brow, um, a, a nude eye, a lash, a lip liner, foundation, which she would powder, up, throw a bus driver wig on, and then be late for her two and a half, even after a two and a half minute bum, bum, bum intro, come out late for her number. It was so cunty, so cunty. It was the stress factor. I was always at least one hour early. I mean, I because I, even before I lived upstairs, but like I was... I, the, the stress of having to be rushed for like a gig like that or just to drag, it's just so, it's so st stressful. It does, it's not enjoyable. I want to feel my pussy. I want to like relax, have a cigarette, like, and then just get all my shit together and then be ready. And, and you know, I, I hate that. I don't, I don't like feeling late. No, stress dreams. You, we've talked about that. Like yeah. when you take a nap in the hotel and you're like, <gasps> Trixie and Katya, Bald and Beautiful Live, which many of you are seeing and will see, we're backstage pretty much ready. Yeah. 20 to curtain. Hey, we're waiting Pretty on the crowd. Ready. Yeah, yeah. Often, We're waiting on the crowd. We're waiting on the crowd. It's an 8 p.m. curtain. Often we're waiting at 8.15 for the crowd. Yeah. It's it's never, it's because people are buying merch. This is all wonderful problems to great, have. Great, great. Wonderful Parking, problems. Parking. Because a lot of times we're pulling downtown. Yeah. And these are gay people. Gay people yeah. driving. They've hit three women. <laughs> you know, like. They, <laughs> They've stolen a car. Yeah. They, they, the car ran out of gas. Did you, on the set of Netflix the other day, did you see the car? I heard it. Oh my. I thought it was a sound effect. It was so crazy. Tell them, because I don't think it made the episode. Oh, it was, no, it was, it was outside and we, uh, me and the couple of PAs and um, the, uh, the grips who, oh, I got some tea on euphoria. I can tell you about, um, this fucking white SUV is like 
screeching out, peeling out. And um, well, first a van pulled up and asked to, um, asked if they wanted to buy something that fell off a truck, some sound equipment. I was like, work. And then um, they left. And then this other, this car scream, screeching, hit four cars um, on its way, like careening. It was almost like they were like, like a child was in it, couldn't reach the gas or pedal. You know what I mean? It was so out of you control. You watched it. Yes. It was a long screech. It screeched for like 30 it screeched seconds. For 30 seconds. And it hit four cars apparently. Yeah. And so we thought it was a stolen car. I thought it, I, I was like, my initial reaction was, oh, this was the, the truck that that sh shit fell off of. You know what I mean? They were chasing after them. Sometimes it pays to be a smoker. Oh, hell yeah. So you saw all that cool shit because you all were smoking. It, love it. And I yeah. was like in my room eating vitamins and water. <laughs> And I got nothing. Yeah. I also learned about, I got the whole tea on the cast of Euphoria because the some of the uh, our grips worked for What's both the season. Um, uh, oh, and on Missy Elliott. And on Mariah Carey. Let's go. Girl, get into this Euphoria gig. first. Okay, so Euphoria. Zendaya, um, absolute sweetheart. They said the crafty at that motherfucking place was off the chain. The, the, the food options were just so wonderful. And that's how you know you're going to have a, ha happy cr a happy crew. You know what I mean? Because I talked to Trace Lissette about being on the set of Monica, an independent movie. And she's like, you know, girl, there's no budget. It's the labor of love. And it's like, those those films are really tough to make, especially in yeah. this world where there's so much money. I just did that scripted show for FX, mm. but I had a guest star and I got to play a real creature. When I read the part, I thought, why didn't they get her? Who? You. Oh, I mean, too close to home. I wouldn't even have to act. I was like, I was like, okay. But then when I was there, I was like, no, I get where they got me. So, <laughs> um, but the food was amazing. Whatever kind of snack you wanted. Oh yeah. Morning, like Love. 12 different types of donuts. I was like, what? The food was amazing. The lunch, the mama, I was that no shade to grinder. Mm. Um, but, uh, <laughs> mama, they're crafty old maiden. First of all, was the, what was, was it, what's the grinder? Crafty? Mama. Imodium. Hello. Pure for men. Hello. No, it, it was, everybody was lovely. Everybody was lovely. It was all corporate Aaron type, type of people. Very, very closing the loop, circling back. Um, but it, every super sweet, wonderful. 1,400 people in this tired, nasty office with no air circulation, stale, horrible, whatever. But mama, I'm going, I'm going in between long days, two hours interview, um, one after the other, three in a row, all day. Three a day? Oh yeah, three a day. Two, three interviews a day, two hours each. Oh, yeah, and all, I mean, it was, it was like hard work. Like I was like- People I, don't I'm realize. Patting myself on the back because being Katie Kirk is not no easy feat. It's really not. And some well, of these, not for you, language barrier. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for you to Google Translate in real time, you know. Um, wait, 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 wait. So I go to the snack bar. It's like, girl, like fruit snacks in a in a bag, um, like little mini skinny pops. Am I a fruit snack fan? Girl, and then Gatorade, and then like. Girls, what is this, a high school football game? And then, of course, the lunch is like, you order lunch. I want catering, mama. I want stations. I want buffet style, honey. Girl. Buffet. Lately at Netflix, I've been getting the catered lunch because I'm like, this is good. It was cunty. This is really good. And, and they I, had a lattes with our faces on them, bitch. Yeah. Mama, they snapped, they snapped all they snapped all of our dicks off that day. They snapped my dick off and rubbed my face in it. Yeah. They snapped it and um they used it as a as one of those things. You know how you rock climb with the the, the poles? I do know some people who when they shoot podcasts, they shoot like three days in a row, guests all day, mm -hmm. and then they'll have podcasts banked for days. Yeah. I couldn't do that. Drew a fellow does that, I think. She yeah, does, she does. Yeah, yeah. I love her, by the way. Love. But you and I doing this, we do about once every two weeks. We do two an episode, two, two each day. I can't do more than that. If you and I were to come in here and do... Well, what the fuck would we talk about? You know what I mean? Also, we, it's not like, Mama, we have like other jobs together too. You know what I mean? So. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, and they're remind. about 12 hours a day each, bitch. I know, girl. Don't even get me started. But so... The so the euphoria. I was such a cunt the other day on set for something. I sat down. What'd you say? What'd you say? I sat down for something and I waited for two hours to start. I sat. Down, I was in a steel bone corset. Oh, that's right. No, I was like, and I, I was and I'm, I'm still bone. I'm, I looked incredible, oh. obviously. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. And two hours go by, and I finally go on set with the body mic on, and the, they go, "Oh, it looks like the hair is wilting a little bit on the side." I go, "Yeah, I didn't plan on wearing it for two hours." Love, because I don't care. Love, love, love. Like what I'm, if, I'm not Bob, Bob regular in sweatpants. Yeah. You got me in a chicken suit sitting twiddling my thumbs for two hours. You get what you get, honey. honey. If it looks like a milk to candle, that's on you, boo. Well, you know what the thing about Eddie Murphy? He uh, So in Tandiwe Newton, who is uh, his co-star on one of those Norbit Clump movies, one of those stupid ones. She's an incredible actor. It was the the interviewer was asking her, you know, what was it like working with Eddie Murphy? He's like, well, I didn't really have any scenes with him. Because every single time that he did not have to be there, he could use a double. He did. 
So she was acting alongside pretty much a double the whole time. He was rarely on set. Isn't that crazy? I got a double for something on this project because the character drives a car and guess who doesn't have a valid license anymore? Oh, that's right. So they got a bald double, Love. my height, and my character had like a baseball cap and a hood because somebody else had to drive away. Yeah, yeah. So I had to do the scene where I walk away and I'm like, I have my car keys and I walk by the car and I hand them to someone who's dressed just like me. And then I stand out of the way while the car drives away. Love that. And the other actor had to act like that was me. Oh, and so the, the actor was like, yeah, I've been in this. I've been in this. He does a lot of like body work and he had very high cheekbones. So he's like, I do a lot of monster work, a lot of horror films I've mm -hmm. done. Real, real resume, real, real actor. I don't know what you call it when you're like Shape of Water where you do a lot of monster acting. Mm. It's a real profession where yeah, you do yeah. a lot of movement work. Sure, sure. And I'm like, and today you just have to drive a car. Fierce. For me. Fierce. Sorry. No, that's probably like not like, exciting. Like easy day. At the, it's like field day at the office. Well, then they had a stand in. You better believe every time they get a stand in for me, he is white, bald, and about 66 years old. Every time. Oh, demoralizing. Every time. And I'm in full drag sometimes. So they have him stand in for me. And then I come in and drag with the titty plate on. And I was like, You're dismissed, Uncle Paul. And then I yeah, step go back it. to the home. They're looking for you. But sometimes they'll get a stand in for me for lighting. They get him for lighting yeah, yeah, so yeah. that the, the artist can be getting ready while someone lights you. Yeah. And they'll put them in like a $10 blonde wig. Love. And it's like some straight guy in like a $10 love. blonde wig. And he's my height. Love. love. And then they'll love. put him in Capizio tights too so that they know what the legs look like. And, and the then, person's in Capizio yeah. tights with a shitty $10 Dolly Parton wig. And then they'll tuck him. They'll tape his Well, that's, I tuck him. I tuck him. So that why well, I tuck it back. And that way when I'm kneel behind them, they can piss and I can drink from behind. The spigot of truth. <laughs> the backyard spigot. <laughs> The backyard spigot, honey. What else you Get got? Get the spigot off the Euphoria TV. I'm not team. watching that. So, oh yeah. So Euphoria, um, Jacob Elordi, sweetheart, very shy, very quiet. And then get this. Why well, have um, him in a cock cage? <laughs> at, it was a little tense on season two, I believe, because he Is was- Is he from Euphoria? Yeah, Jacob Elordi. Oh, I've never seen it. Oh, okay. He's the hunk. He's from Saltburn, the hunk, the Australian hunk. He's supposed to be high school? Any like, any like six, eight? Mama, mama, that whole, that was, that was 90210 vibes where 35 year olds were in high school. Yeah. Like uh, jerking each other off in the theater, right. doing, doing drugs instead of French, you know, right. all that stuff. Um, and uh, he was dating, uh, had been dating Zendaya and then Tom Holland showed up on, on, um, like to set sometimes her new boyfriend and there was some tension there. It's like interesting, like set tension. But then she said the crafty was off the chain. Um, uh, I asked her about Sydney Sweeney. I was like the one with the big boobs and I don't my think- body, My real body double. Well, that's what I was, yeah. I mean, yeah. Or the, her or Amanda Seyfried. She's usually mine. Right. Yeah. Um, and then she said, Missy Elliott. I was like, who else, <gasps> who, who have you worked with who's been like so insufferable? She's like, well, J-Lo. No. She said the, the, the eye contact rule is absolutely in effect. I don't don't like look that. at her. Well, I don't I'll, like that. What about this though? Look at me if you want. Who cares? What about this though? Because I got also at the grinder gig, the grips were amazing. They gave me a, a lot of insider tea about other like, um, you know, um, big stars like Selena Gomez and such. But Missy Elliott is like apparently so, she was so self-conscious and so kind of like reserved and, and really anxious that they kind of had to build like a sort of a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard to get her from her trailer to the set. Love. Yeah. It's kind of fierce. She's Missy. Give her what she wants. Yeah. Fly her in. Put her on the helicopter. Fly yeah. her in. Yeah. Love. Sex, yeah. Sex are so good. She says blah blah blah. Yeah. I mean, the no eye contact thing is weird. And also, even even J Lo's hair and makeup people, they're not allowed to look at her. So they're just sort of like, yeah, looks and, good. And also, like the, I mean, the 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 hassle of traveling with a twenty five to thirty person entourage who all has to get COVID tested the night before. It's just so, uh, it's so out of pocket. I love shit like that. People have their whole apartments built. Uh, Mariah Carey with the bed. Bob told me. You know, you and I, our tour was two tour buses and a semi, which I thought was like- I thought that was I thought insane. It was, I thought it was the whiz on I thought, tour. I thought, I thought we were insane. doing too much. I thought it was insane. Bob said it's 65 vehicles for Madonna. 65 vehicles. And well, she flies private everywhere with her children. Yeah. And the rest of them, it's a, Bob says it's like hundreds of people. Well, because it's the 45 um, uh, uh, por Portuguese villagers that she has in her uh, for like 10 <laughs> minutes in a backup day. You know, it's like- Well, and you, re you remember Bales, our tour manager? He's yeah. out with Pink. Okay. He was like, I'm on, t he's, I think I'm paraphrasing, but he was like, I'm on crew C, which means there's entire groups of dozens of people. I have never been on this tour and never will. Fuck. We all work here and don't even see each other. That is so wild, dude. Imagine, imagine feeding all these people. Somebody's job is to feed hundreds of people a night. It better be good. Shit. Boston market, room tap, Boston market. Oh, oh say so you, you can malign that shit all you want. I would fuck that shit up. Cold, Boston market? Hot, Hell yeah. Room temp Boston Market is better than a lot of other hot foods. Mama, 
that chicken, those mashed potatoes, the mashed potatoes, those fucking apples, the cinnamon apples in the, in the, I was at the airport the other day and I wanted an apple fritter because I, my appetite's still not back. Apple and fritter, it, she bites. So sometimes I'm like, I need to have my absolute dream food in order to drum up any feeling of wanting to eat. Sure. I was like, and you and I love apple fritters. I love. We love. Love. So, so I wanted one and I went and got it and there was donut. There was, there was dough. There was, there was glaze. It didn't have that sour, that appley bite, which mm. is like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? It looks like Put an apple fritter. man on the moon. This needs to taste different than a real donut. Apple fritters need to taste... It's like apple a, saucy. It's like, a, like, it's like a pastry almost. Yeah. yeah, girl, I made some apple turnovers in my in my oven the other day. You and made these? I, well, no, I, I I baked them. Like oh. I, I didn't bake them from scratch. They were frozen. Did you go off? Oh, I, mama, it took all every ounce of my physical capability not to just jump on the counter table and then deep okay. dick them with all my whole balls, dick and pussy, like a flashlight, honey. Yeah. I wanted to put them, stack them, stack them, tape them together, and just bonk, 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 beat it up. Wait, there is one uh, last thing I wanted to mention to you so badly. Tell me. Fuck. Tell me. It was about the getting fucked by the eight inch dick. Oh, it was the perfect dick for me because, well, I love a, like, I love the idea of a big dick. Who, I mean, who doesn't? You know, and I also love small dicks, whatever. Um, it, but being an ass man, um, I, w I got to bottom and the stress, of course, the stress is like, I'm stressed out like to the max. It's the stress factor of, cleaning out of course i had to take another shower because i'm just so paranoid and then um i got to really like i got to really go ow like i got to be my full sweet pussy pauline fantasy like this motherfucker did you like the big dick did you like getting bucked i loved sucking it and like slapping it on my face and went sure yeah, yeah and yeah. then but because it was a very large large one it didn't get so fucking hard that it was like a battering ram yeah and it felt well sometimes fabulous. the little ones get so hard that you're like dicks. this is crazy it's like eh, eh, eh. like this the, the, the um knife of the round table like little 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 switchblade knife very switchblade dick yeah very that letter opener yeah i don't yeah. like that i hate that although yeah. when i'm getting my dick sucked if anybody ever does the slap on the tongue thing oh you hate that what do you think it's like amateur hour who is this for? It doesn't feel good. You look dumb. Oh, <gasps> how dare you? It's stupid. And it's always something people see in porn. Like, I'm going to do that porn thing. No, you're not. Don't do that. All. Don't do all that. I bitch. also did. Oh, it, you, if it's not in your throat, you know, have tears coming down your face. Stop. Oh my God. What are we doing? My pilgrim pearls are being clutched. So I'm going to suck it. I'm going to put a small comfortable amount in and I'm just like pose a lot. What if I'm I, not looking to you to pose a lot. Well, I make well, it feel good, bitch. Listen, when I started to do this and this didn't work. Sure. What about spitting on it? Do you like the spit on the dick? I do. I love super do you nasty. Like spit on the hole? I love super nasty, wet, like sloppy but like, jobs. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I puke. I puke. <laughs> Especially if I have a chicken masala, because that room stinks up so good. So good. I'll have like a COVID lung tar with like a little <laughs> blood in it and just regurge. <laughs> The regurge. We it, we watched um give birth and jerk off with the placenta. Mama. Well, <laughs> would you ever eat the? You ever, would you eat the placenta? Uh, yes, after watching um uh, Yuri Masbella's um uh, Kardashian placenta parody video, absolutely. Do people eat the foreskin? Excuse me. You know they eat the placenta for like ritual no. or health. Do people eat foreskins? I don't know. Check. You have to check with those Orthodox rabbis biting the skin off and sucking the blood out. Boop. I think we gotta go. I don't think it's okay, but with religious stuff, nothing surprises me. Mama, you know? and here's the thing. I, I, you know, I am so plucked and I continue to stay plucked about being circumcised because I don't want my whole place covered in lube. Do you think I'm, do you think I'm, do you think I'm proud of myself when I, sh when I give you my phone and, and it's, it's so slippery wet from lube? You know what I mean? Like, do you think that I'm proud of my nephew when he <sighs> tumbles down the stairs and breaks his neck because of the lube patch on the, on the stairs? Right. Do you think I'm proud of that? Standing over the body at the funeral, knowing that it's, yeah, it's gun oil's fault. Yeah. And then, and then me doing the eulogy and then blaming big, uh, big lube for it. And, and then you I'll, have those big, thick black fisting gloves on. Yeah. And I said, I just can't. <laughs> what about the fisting lube? That's like super thick, like maple syrup. That's, um, a uh, J lube. Yeah. It's fierce. J lube. It's like, uh, it's slime. And just like J-Lo, J-Lube, you can't look people in the eye. That's <laughs> you look kind of in the brown eye. You look in the brown eye. Okay, bitch. Okay, uh, bitch. <laughs> you stupid bitch. You, okay, you stupid <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Why does it, whatever happened to fun? <laughs> Fall out the window. 
<laughs> New York is over. I'm so bored I could just die. <laughs> love. So what fierce. an exit. So fierce. Love it. Girl, can I just say one more thing? Yeah. You know, you and I watched, I think it's probably implied that you and I watched Love is Blind season six uh -huh. at Netflix. Mm -hmm. Of course, I went home and watched the full thing because Did I you have live? to. You live. Well, it's only a half season right now. They release it in halves. Mama, living, sliving, loving. Straight people crazy. crazy. expect the unexpected. Anything is possible. Yeah. These way, these men and men and women are so different. Mars and Venus, The way baby. they are Mars able to Venus. relate to each other without seeing each other, knowing how the male brain works, and knowing how much visuals and someone, like someone looks is part of the process. The way they keep every season calling it an experiment because they're trying to find out is love blind when it almost never works. The way they keep calling it an experiment. Like yeah. we have five seasons yeah. of knowing this shit doesn't work. Yeah. Our it's hit, crazy. Our hit and runs unethical. Right. <laughs> it's like, Sometimes it's one couple who makes it. Yeah. Maybe two. Because, you know, they're, they're generally quite attractive people and, and, yes. and, and not exactly like... I would I would venture to guess no shade on the simpler side. And the men this season. Oh, um, what's the men it, this what season was that sitting on, sitting on the couch with their legs up in short shorts with just like gunt and thick legs. Yeah, yeah. The, the guy with the mullet, Straining. Trevor. Yeah, oh Trevor. The Trevor Project is when he murders me with his fucking cock, girl. <laughs> it's the men this season are hot. Even the derpy dumpy ones. Mm -hmm. I know that they're they're ugly, but sometimes yeah. ugly guys are hot. Yeah, Dennis from Der Dennis of Derpistan, he can get it. He can get the, the D is fire. Do you know what I'm saying? Sometimes guys who aren't hot are hot. Mama. Yes. I of course I know that. Sometimes I'm like, damn, he looks fish out as hell. Would yeah. fuck him. Oh. <laughs> okay, I gotta go. Anyway, gotta love go. is blind season six. We're not sponsored. It's it's fierce. It's fierce. Hey, listen, have a happy Christmas. Bye. Bye. Thank you.